Hi, Mana family. In the early 90s, Marin and I went snow skiing at Mammoth Mountain with some friends. After a day spent skiing, we all got into the condo's hot tub to soak our aching muscles. Our friend's eight-year-old daughter dared me to jump out of the hot tub with her and roll in the, a nearby snowbank. Going from a soothing hot tub to an icy snowbank and back again can be a shock to your system. So, of course, we had to do it three times. Truth is sometimes like that snowbank. It shocks you, but it's good for you. Jeremiah the prophet had that experience. God had commanded Jeremiah to warn the nation of Judah that judgment was coming if they refused to repent. Jeremiah's mornings were rejected, and he was persecuted harshly. You would think that God would encourage his obedient but persecuted prophet with soothing words. Not so. In essence, God tells Jeremiah, Fashion your seatbelt. You ain't seen nothing yet. Jeremiah 12, 5 records God's words to Jeremiah where he he says to Jeremiah, if you have run with footmen and they have tired you out, then how can you compete with horses? If you fall down in the land of peace, how will you do in the thicket of the Jordan? God actually encourages Jeremiah by warning him that his troubles were about to get worse, not better. God compares a little local opposition from Anathoth, his hometown, to doing battle with infantry, footmen. God then warns Jeremiah that there's going to be even greater opposition coming from the people of Jerusalem, which God compares to cavalry horses. So God asks Jeremiah, if you're getting discouraged with a little hometown opposition, what are you going to do when the capital city of Jerusalem opposes you? If you're giving up in a land of relative peace, what will you do in the thicket of the Jordan? In that era, the thicket of the Jordan was really well-watered bottomland that supported dense underbrush, trees, and shrubs. Uh, At that time, it was an ideal habitat for wild animals, including leopard and even lions lived there in Jeremiah's era. You know, God never encourages his people by sugarcoating the truth or whitewashing reality. God had already told Jeremiah the hard truth about his future When he first called Jeremiah as a prophet, Jeremiah 1, 17, God said, Now gird up your loins and arise and speak to them all which I command you, verse 19. And they, meaning the nation of Israel, will fight against you, but they will not overcome you, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. When you obey God, those who hate God will fight against you, Jeremiah, but you will win because God is with you. Jesus promised us as his disciples the same thing in John 16, 13, when he said, in the world you have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. Trials and troubles should not surprise us. Jesus promised us problems, but he also promised us his power and his presence to overcome those problems. We can face a difficult future, and we're in one, with confidence and courage because Jesus has overcome the power of sin and death through the cross, and God has promised to be with us, to deliver us. So in the world we live in today with global pandemics and a great deal of uncertainty, never forget, God has designed us to do life together.